Hello and a warm welcome to you from Club Scrap. I'm Trisha Morris and today's project is to create the pages for our Shades of Winter remix. Just make sure that you're working with the remix and it's likely you would be because it's been a long time since the original Shades of Winter kit was released. I've got my papers all set aside here. Goodies are over for use later on. I've got my accordion pocket file so we can stay organized. If you're not using the file, just make sure you have a spot for four piles of trimmed pieces as we prepare all of the cuts for eight 12 by 12 scrapbook pages. So let's grab our paper and sort it into the order we'll use it. We're going to begin by trimming both of those swirl prints. So um, we had a hard time naming these. I wasn't sure what to call them, but we went with swirl because yeah, it's just so beautiful. So I'm going to take both of these prints and put them face down on my trimmer base and then move on to one sheet of the frost print. I think this is absolutely stunning. Then we're going to find all three pieces of that light blue paper. And if you're not sure which one is light blue, just compare it to the gorgeous dark blue in your kit. And then we need one piece of dark blue, one champagne metallic. And you'll notice this paper also has a bit of a ridge to it. It's really, really beautiful. It's smooth on one side. And then we're gonna move on to the cut aparts. Find the one with the berries on it first. It's uh, mostly border strips, put that face down. And then the other cut apart with the larger frame here, a snowflake is winter's butterfly. Oh, I love that. Then we need two more sheets of your champagne metallic. The remaining two sheets of the dark blue. Two ivory one two and then the remaining frost print face down and the remaining ivory print ivory plain rather i'm going to lift everything over to where we started with the swirl prints and let's get to our trimming work first cut is nice and easy so i'll unlock my trimmer blade there's a little notch down here that keeps the blade locked and I was just make sure the paper is flush at the top edge here. I'm gonna find seven inches. I do this a lot for my first cut. I always try to start with the easier cuts anyway, um, but seven inches, make sure you don't use centimeters, but you're using inches. And before I slice, I'll stabilize on this clear bar. <laughs> And there you go, that's all there is to it. I'm gonna stack up these two pieces and place them at an angle into the pocket labeled three and four. Next, we'll take the other swirl print and we're gonna begin trimming at nine and a half for this, this one. So nine, go left two columns to nine and a half. And then seven. And we're just gonna rotate and make a little cut here. We're just gonna cut at 11 and three quarters and place this larger piece in pocket one and two and the other two longer strips in pocket seven and eight and we did end up with a tiny little scrap here and we're moving on to the frost print i'm going to position this so that the brightest spot on the print is on the right edge of my trimmer and i'll cut at 10 six and two, way down there. Now take this long border strip, place that in pocket five and six, and then you can pick up the next two strips and they should be the same width. We're gonna stack them neatly together and trim at six. And make sure you press firmly on that clear bar to hold them in place while that blade comes down. We're gonna stack up all four of the four by six pieces and place them in pocket five and six, along with that last two by 12 strip. That's also five and six. And we're gonna take one sheet now of the light blue. We're gonna trim all three, but we're only gonna trim them one at a time. Some of the cuts will be similar. Um, we'll start out here with this one at 11 inches, nine and three quarters, eight and a half, and six and a quarter. Rotate that six and a quarter inch piece so it's horizontal and we'll cut at eight and a half and four and a quarter. And gather up those two photo mats you made. These are four and a quarter by six and a quarter, which is nice because our photos are four by six. We're gonna place these in pocket five and six and then trim that last little rectangle that fell. We'll cut at six and three. 
gather up those two uh, rectangles and place them in pocket one and two, plus there is a small scrap that fell. Now I can grab the remaining stack of strips and we'll uh, deal them out. One, two, three of them are all used in layout three and four. And the final little strip isn't used in five and six. Take just one more sheet of the light blue. We're gonna make some paper ribbons, I call these. They're just little quarter inch strips. So we'll start out at 11 and three quarters. 11 and a half. And six and a quarter. We're going to perform the same cuts we did on the previous uh, six and a quarter by 12 inch piece. So we start out at eight and a half and four and a quarter. That gives us our photo mats that are four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Perfect. Pocket three and four for those. And then we're going to do the same thing here make some rectangles and a scrap. So cut at six and three and gather up the two rectangles, pocket three and four. A small scrap fell. And then this strip, now we're gonna make three rectangles the same size. So I'm gonna place this in horizontally and cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Gather up the three rectangles you just made and those will go in seven and eight. And the tiny little strips that are left, seven and eight, plus there is a little blue scrap here. And our final light blue, this will be a little bit of a different uh, cutting style here. We're gonna start at 11, then eight and a quarter, and four. We're going to cut this four inch piece in half so rotate and cut at six gather the two pieces and place in seven and eight now this next strip here we'll trim at six and a quarter this also goes in seven and eight and then the other shorter piece one and two now we're going to make a bunch of rectangles here we'll start at 11 eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. Three of these, I guess they're squares. <laughs> they go in pocket five and six and the other square, seven and eight. There's a small scrap, we'll get rid of that. And this last strip, five and six. We've arrived at our dark blue. Make sure you just have one sheet of paper here. We're going to make some more paper ribbons. So we'll start at 11 and 3 quarters, 11 and a half, then 9 and a half, and 6 and a quarter. We're going to make two photo mats and a few more other odd things. So our first cut, if we, after rotating now, is at 10 and a half. Then eight and a half and four and a quarter. Here we have our two photo mats. Those go in pocket one and two. And then we have this uh, two inch strip. It's, it's a two by six and a quarter. That goes in pocket one and two also. And this would have been a scrap, but I found a really cool home for it. We're just gonna cut it horizontally at four and two and gather up all three of these little pieces. They're not the same size, so that's okay. And put them in pocket one and two. Now we're gonna make some rectangles, all the same height. So we're gonna trim horizontally at 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. Two of these pieces go in pocket one and two. And then the other two, they go in three and four. And now we have this oh little scrap that fell off the end for this strip. We're gonna cut at 11 and a half. It's gonna make a little piece. And then seven and three quarters and four. A 
the four inch piece goes in pockets seven and eight. Then uh, one of these pieces goes in one and two and the other in five and six. We've got the two paper ribbons going in pocket one and two and you have a little tiny scrap. Champagne metallic time. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go at nine and a quarter. Five and three quarters. Rotate and trim at 11 and a quarter. Seven and a half. Three and three quarters. Gather up the three rectangles the same and place them in pocket three and four. There is a scrap again. Sorry about all the scraps, my friends. We're gonna repeat those measurements with the next strip. This is a three and a half inch strip right now. We're gonna cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. This time gather up the three pieces and once again, they go in pocket three and four and a scrap. The next strip, a little different, but starting at the same, we'll cut at 11 and a quarter, nine, five and a quarter. All three of these pieces are used in layout five and six. And then there is the little scrap that fell off the end. And we've arrived at our cut aparts. Let's take a moment to prep these. So we're going to remove everything beyond the outside edge of that cutting guide. And on my first cut, I usually cut generously. So I removed the text, but I still have a little bit left. I'm going to clean up on my final trip around the edge here. So I'm just going to cut this side and then rotate. And I'm lining things up by looking at that silver... Uh, cut metal cutting bar looking at the edge of it and lining it up with that printed guiding guide uh, guide on the on the cut apart when I make my final rotation I can actually just cut at 12 usually get one more thing I want to clean up here on this side and you can see that my trimmer just literally took off a hair uh, from that last rotation it's one of the reasons I love this trimmer so much now when we begin I want the um, the berries to be on our right and we'll cut at ten and a half. Nine. Eight and a quarter. Seven and a half. Five and a half. And three. All right, so this long piece is used in layout one and two. And then we have some uh, squares and a little rectangle to make. So make sure the words, if you listen carefully, that should be on your right and we'll cut at 10, seven and a half, five, two and a half. So we've got the three pieces that have only snowflakes on them. Those go in five and six. And then the one with the berries, seven and eight. And then this last little uh, quote here, five and six. I'm gonna pick up the remaining strips. My favorite winter activity, three and four. Nature listens that when snow falls, that's five and six. And then the two berry strips, those go in seven and eight. We need to do this uh, one more time, removing the outer perimeter of the piece to make that nice 12 by 12 that we want to start with. So just go ahead and remove those edges. You can get rid of your scraps from the edges and then we'll begin with the blue uh, strips on the right and the first cuts at 11. And 10, eight and a quarter. six and a half and four. Now we'll rotate and see the tag right here. That's going to be on your right and we'll cut at 10, six. This larger piece, pocket seven and eight. 
And then we have the circle going into three and four. For the tag, if you want, you can just, even right now, just clip off the corners. You can do this later on with scissors as well. This goes in pocket three and four. With the tag on the right, let's cut at eight and a half and five. This larger piece goes in pocket five and six. Then we have the prompt that a tag that's horizontal. That'll go in seven and eight. And I'm having a hard time getting this in here. Okay, and then this other vertical tag, five and six also. Pick up the next strip. We'll cut at eight and a half and five once again. This goes in pocket one and two. And the little berries also one and two. And some people are worth melting for five and six. That's sweet. Okay, this next strip, we have the word cool. That should be on our right with a cut at 11 and a quarter. 10 and a half. Nine and three quarters. And six. All right, the journaling prompt, one and two. Maybe it's cold outside seven and eight and then we have these three tiny little pieces going in pocket one and two and then our coordinating strips here three and four that was your final cut and file congratulations you did it i'm going to support my accordion pocket file while i get rid of my trimmer and then i'm going to turn in my instructions to the very last page so during this phase of assembly, we're gonna start from layout number eight and work our way to layout number one without gluing anything down. I'll call that the dry fit process. Then when we part ways at the end of class, you will know exactly what to do to assemble every page. You can begin at page one and end at page eight. Then you can just add your photos after all of that. So here's my stack, I've pre-sorted it uh with a very specific order in mind so i'm going to take this top sheet and slide it to the right the entire remaining stack remains on my left and now i have what i need for layout seven and eight pictured here at the bottom of page five okay so that's seven and eight so at this point we just need to empty the pocket labeled seven and eight it's a lot of stuff in there and you know as i'm filing it doesn't really matter uh, what order things land um and I do like to keep everything in my hand and deal it out like cards. So for example, if you're playing cards with friends, you don't have the deck on the table generally, unless you're like five or something, and you don't take one card at a time and you deal it out this way. So it's just the most efficient way to distribute the pieces. We'll start out with these long, uh, swirly strips on the left edge and top edge. And then we're going to add a little separation between with my paper ribbon here. I love these. And then I get to add the berries. So it just creates a lovely little backdrop for our photos. Then you have that set of three rectangles that are the same. And we're gonna lay those out film strip style. So what's neat about the measurement here is it allows the spacing to occur between each piece. Then of the remaining uh, light blue mats, there's one that's larger. That one's gonna be placed vertically and then nested with this sentiment. There's also a smaller blue and that's gonna nest with baby is cold outside. Now over here on the right, I'm gonna take the remaining two shorter mats and put them kind of at an angle and we've got the cranberries here. I'm gonna have that on the nest. And then this tag will be off to the right here. And I also added a, a applique of a snowflake here. And then three more here on this side. I had one sort of on and then kind of like as if they're falling, okay? <laughs> I don't know how it could be any easier, but I'll go over some finishing tips for you for the final assembly process. Now here's my finished uh, eight. And what I generally do for, for these little paper ribbons, since they're so narrow, I use my book binding glue with a needle tip applicator. So I first I put the two by 12 strip down, or I think it's two and a half, whatever. And then I run the nozzle of my glue onto the champagne metallic paper, right? And I use the edge of this paper as a guide for the nozzle. And then I just put it down on top of the glue 
rather than putting glue on the strip. Then I just add this with my regular adhesive. These I added with the book binding glue works really well. For the tag here, I did add some of the Dazzle stickers. Now, I didn't add any Dazzles to any of the pages until they were completely done and assembled. And then I came through with my sheet here, and then I just bent it back and picked up the Dazzle with my craft knife. And that's just a much, much easier way to attach these gorgeous stickers. You'll have plenty. I used less than half of my sheet. Um, and you'll notice there's just a lot of different styles on the sheet as well. So you're going to have a lot of fun with these and discovering how beautiful they are. Um, and again, I just added those to the edge. Now with the tag shape, I trimmed, of course, the ends at that angle. And then I popped a little slot into the tag with my slot punch. If you don't already have one of these, you'll use it more than you think you will. I don't like to add, I have so much stuff, I don't like to add any any uh, tools to my list, but this is one I'm, I have no regrets adding, and we do carry these at Club Scrap if, if you're looking for one. Then I um, wound some of that taffeta ivory through the tag and then secured it on the back. On the facing page, this is seven, I added that applique once again with our book binding glue, some dazzles right down over here, and then a double looped taffeta ribbon. So you just cut a length wider than, two lengths rather, wider than this piece, link the ribbon together, pull tight, and then attach the ends around to the back. So beautiful. Let's uh, slide now. This is what I'll have you do. I, mean, I don't necessarily recommend that you glue everything down now. When you go back to adhere, it'll just be so easy because everything's kind of in its place, even if it all dumps down into the bottom of a bag or something. I'm sliding eight, seven on top of eight, and then I'm going to slide this over. And we're looking now at layouts five and six here in our instructions at the top of page five. And we'll take everything out of the pocket labeled five and six. Once again, I'll deal from the hand if possible. And I'm going to take the strip here, uh, the darkest one I did at the bottom, and then the one with the brightest spot I put at the top. I think that's my favorite spot in the whole collection. <laughs> now beneath and above, we're going to do something similar to what we did before. I'm going to add that light blue strip as a mat for our border. So when snow falls, we'll be on this side, and then we'll finish it. Nature listens. I love the balance here but not totally symmetrical. We're gonna add two vertical mats here and then nest them with the print, which you won't see much of. And then we're gonna use the other part of the print over here on this side. Okay, now we have two light blue squares. Those are gonna go up here in the left corner. And I'll nest them with two of my artistic squares here. And then we'll balance with the final light blue square down over on this side. So again, we're creating balance and symmetry. Now I have a smaller champagne piece that nests. If you listen carefully, the silence is beautiful. And then we have a tall skinny that's going to fit right here. Just create this really nice um, quad balance here. <laughs> And then I'm going to nest this smaller champagne piece with my tag. I'll clip the ends and slot punch it so I can add ribbon. And then finally, a mat for some people are worth melting for down over here in the corner. That's your basic assembly. Again, I'm not working necessarily with the embellishments right now. However, I will add, um, if you take the tag and you pop out the snowflake, you can use the snowflake, right? So I'm adding one kind of near each one of those squares. On this side, you can see the punched hole, and I'm adding this beautiful ribbon with the silver edge, uh, grosgrain, and it's like a nice wide, just very eye-catching ribbon. I like to keep this type of ribbon relatively flat, um, and that's this is just a great way to do it. There's no there's no knot or anything. Speaking of flat, you got a pretty dimensional embellishment here with this this knit hat. Um, I love these and I, I couldn't resist getting them just because they were so perfect and even in the color that they are. Um, when I glued this to my page, I put a lot of glue on the hat and I put a heavy book on top of it so it'd be as flat as possible. And I'm fine with this level of embellishment. If you're not, I just encourage you to omit the, the embellishment or maybe add it to a card that you can hand deliver. You can see the snowflake added here and then some dazzles on the corner 
after I wrapped the upper corner with more of that ribbon. That's a wonderful way to use the ribbon as well as a little corner uh, accent. And the facing page, this is five. I added more dazzles to this particular square. Here are the snowflakes and then a strip of that ribbon underneath all of that. So first I added this, then my nested strip, and then this. And I used some dry adhesive to kind of keep the, it's such a long piece of ribbon, I did adhere it with just a dry adhesive, then stapled a piece of the folded ribbon to this cute little nested tag. And that's five and six. Now I'll take this page and slide it, and then take this one over and slide it. And I have the two ivory, and if I look at the picture for layout three and four, though, there's my ivory uh, all ready to go. Now I can take all of the items out of this pocket, labeled three and four. Once again, I'll try to hold it in my hand. Um, the largest piece is on the right, and then the smaller is on the left. So basically now the image is just split over the gutter of the two pages. Then you can take um, the one inch light blue strip and then place it against the right edge of the seven inch piece here and nest it with that snowflake border. Across the bottom, there should be one more one inch piece of light blue that goes across the bottom here and then nest it again. So I didn't put anything right in this little gap here. Now there are some champagne metallic larger rectangles. I'm gonna do the same thing I did earlier with some light blue ones. They can go all in a row. This time they're vertical. And then just above it is that wider light blue strip nested with my favorite winter activity page title. Then there are two light blue mats that have buddies in dark blue. Love how that turned out. Then horizontally on the right side, I've got two light blue photo mats here. And then here you'll have a bunch of these um, champagne, again, three of them. They have to be vertically positioned or they won't fit. Then this will go horizontal. I trimmed my um, circle with scissors. You can use a die cut if you have it, but I just used scissors on mine just to show that it could be done. And then in the center of this one, I added one of those iridescent uh, snowflake appliques. So here we go. I added additional dazzles, and I don't know if you can see them. They're so pretty. Again, that was at the very, very end. Here I cut a little slot and added some ribbon. Then I took a separate piece of ribbon, tied a knot into it, and glued it to the top to cover the slot. It's a great look, and it's two pieces, not one. And then here's my, my cute little circle that I hand cut with scissors. And the facing page, once again, I added my little knit cap, put it under a book so that it would be as flat as possible as it dried, and then more uh, dazzle stickers to that bottom row. All right, time to slide over. We're just clipping along right here, all the way to pages one and two. And I think I had my bright blue at the top here, but just whatever floats your boat on that. We'll reach for our accordion pocket file. If you don't have one of these, I have a workshop to help you make one. Um, and it's a very useful tool if you use my method, that's for sure. Now I'm incorporating quite a bit of print here. Now this one I had it so that it has a little border just around the edges here. So top, bottom, and right have the same reveal. It's probably hard to see. I'm gonna take this larger border strip and add a paper ribbon on either side of it. So it's, kind of, it's like a fake out, right? It looks like the whole thing's got backed with blue, but it's really not. Then two horizontal blue mats. And then I cleverly trimmed this little piece here because it nests my journaling prompt here. Now we're gonna make a nice collage. It's a very well balanced, love that. So here I have a vertical and then two vertical smaller rectangles that have buddies, just like before. Now we're gonna take this longer piece and put it sideways. And then this also goes sideways. And we have three tags. Now, these three little pieces fit right behind the snowflakes. 
That's why they didn't have to be the same size. I just taped mine into place. Cool, right? And then you've got the Magic of Winter. Stay cozy and cool. That's all the things I had. <laughs> all right, here we go. We've got some, a loop of ribbon here to the right of this. I added some of the dazzles here and then my three little uh, tags with my blue packed behind them. I did uh, mount them with foam adhesive circles to give it a little bit of a pop. And then I flung some light blue satin ribbon through the hole and wrapped it around to the back secured with tape. Facing page, use my slot punch on either end to just add a little piece of folded ribbon. So it's just a loop, it, it ends here and here. That's how I get a lot of mileage out of my ribbon. Then added a symmetrical row three and three of the Dazzle stickers above and below the quote, just kind of to bring your eye to it. And that's the end. That's pages one and two. I can't believe it. This went very, very quickly. Um, I, my actual filming time, I think with even a sneeze in there, it's a winter sneeze, was 32 minutes, 33 minutes just now. So by the time I edit out a, a few things, um, we'll even be nearly a half an hour. So that's not bad for a set of eight pages. Grab your adhesive, your tape, your bookbinding glue, and your slot punch and get to work on finishing these pages. Don't forget to add photos, of course, because that's what this is all about. If you like this uh, class, um, I love to hear back from you. Just leave me a message or give me a thumbs up. Um, that really helps our channel as well. And make sure you subscribe to YouTube, uh, Club Scrap's channel on YouTube, as well as our monthly club. Love to welcome you as a member of Club Scrap. We have a monthly page kit we'd love to share with you um, each and every month, along with a video workshop just like this one. So I look forward to seeing you in class again soon. Bye.